welcome everyone. Uh, today is Monday, July 25th, and this is the Board of Architectural Review and Historic Preservation. Um, it's now approximately six o'clock, and joining me on the board are, from my left to right, are Peter DeWitt, Sarah Latham, Mark McIntyre, and in the ether is John Gregory. So we do have a full board. I'm going to move that we open up the session. Do I have a second on that? Second. Second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, joining us, joining us, thank you, uh, John. Uh, joining us as well as our legal counsel, Alice Cooley, uh, Director of Planning for the Village of Southampton, Alex Wallach, uh, our video, uh, videographer, Kat Styler, and our recording secretary, Jackie Allen. Uh, first item are the minutes from our last meeting, July 11th. Uh, has everybody had a chance to read them? And if there are no questions or edits, then I would move that we enter it into the record. Okay, uh, so a second on that. Second. Second by Peter. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. We have before us two written decisions, uh, so I'm going to let council address those. Uh, the first one is for Chris Char LLC at 40 Elm Street. This uh, was an application for a certificate of appropriateness to relocate the existing dwelling, construct porches, additions, and alterations to the dwelling, and exterior alterations to the existing garage. The property is improved with a uh, an American Foursquare style house known as the Walker House, which is a contributing structure to the Post Crossing Historic District. The board found that the relocation of the asset would be untenable because relocation of historic assets despoil the aesthetic setting of the asset and changes, in, and changes its character, thereby diminishing the character and appearance of the historic district. The relocation of a historic asset also disqualifies it as a historic asset asset and should be avoided. After lengthy discussion, the applicant withdrew their request to relocate the structure. The design presented uh, for additions and exterior alterations um, was also lengthy, but ultimately the board found that the, um, the addition uh, was set back, making the projection subservient to the existing house. And with some changes to the proposed site plan, the board found the design and proposed landscaping and site plan to be appropriate for the historic district. Okay. Uh, has everybody had a chance to read the written decision? Uh, were any questions or comments? John? No. Okay. I would just like to make one compliment. And uh, as Alice said, these were lengthy discussions, and uh, there was a lot of um, consideration by the board as well as listening by the applicant and that's what makes this process work so I appreciate that. So with that said, um, I move that we accept the written decision regarding uh, Chris Char LLC at 40 Elm Street as drafted by council. Second on that? Second. Second by Peter. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Uh, opposed? Okay, well, let's do that again. All in favor? Uh, aye. So who, who are the ayes? Aye. Aye by Peter. John. Aye. John was an aye. I was an aye. Uh, oppose? Nay. Nay by Mark and nay by Sarah. Um, and the other part of that is the board doesn't always uh, agree. Um, but again, that's, that's called democracy. Uh, or at least uh, <laughs> it's a democracy. We'll let it stay at that. Uh, all right, the next one, Council. Uh, the next one is for Circles East End LLC at 41 Gin Lane. The owner applied for a certificate of appropriateness to construct additions and alterations to the existing dwelling. Uh, this property is also improved with a contributing structure to the historic district, and it was previously altered with a certificate of appropriateness. The applicant presented the design to add on to the existing porch and add uh, second floor dormers for light and ventilation. After a successful change to the dormers, the board approved the architectural style, um, but found that the new deck was not appropriate, which was eliminated from the plan. Okay. Uh, similar on many accounts, uh, has the board uh, read this and Yes. Okay, all in favor. Uh, similarly, this was lengthy and there was a lot of back and forth. Um, so I will move that we accept 
The written decision is drafted by counsel from Circles East End LLC at 41 Gin Lane. Is there a second on that? Second. Second by Peter. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So I by Mark, Peter, and John. Uh, oppose? Nay. Nay. Nay by Sarah. Okay. So we got that. Okay, great. All right, so now let's move on. Uh, the next agenda item was uh, a demolition evaluation at uh, Walnut Street, for Walnut Street Partners at 54 Walnut Street. Uh, and the applicant has requested an adjournment to September 12th uh, to have the opportunity to review the report recently submitted by the historic consultant. Uh, so I move that we accept the applicant's request to adjourn to the meeting of the 12th. Uh, is there a second on that? Second, second by Mark. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So that's okay. Move to the 12th. Okay. Uh, okay. Public hearings, historic. Um, the applicant of One Hampton Road, JNH, uh, where it had been a pending adjournment, uh, Jackie informed me today that the applicant submitted a request to adjourn to August 8th. So I would move that we accept the applicant's request to adjourn to August 8th. Is there a second on that? Second by, second. by Peter. <laughs> okay. And all in favor? Aye. aye. John's aye as well. Okay. Uh, the next application is that of Anthony and Deborah Celebra. Uh, at 196 Hill Street uh, to construct a two-story dwelling uh, and attached garage. This is a carryover from last week, and I don't know if the parties are here. Are they? Yes. Oh, okay, great. I thought you looked familiar. So uh, whoever is presenting, uh, if, it's, if it be both of you. No, it's the architect. The, the architect. Uh, Joe is supposed to be on Zoom. Okay, so let's see. If he is, great, and if not, we'll just do a second call as we go through the agenda. Okay? So, Kat, what do you have there? Joseph? Yes, yes. Okay, now let me just get out my file, folks. Okay, uh, again, just if you could uh, introduce yourself. Uh, Joe Pajak, architect for the applicant. Okay, all right, so do you want to pick up from where we were last, last time? Yeah, um, so uh, we were here, we adjourned the last meeting, we were here uh, about a month ago, um, and I, I submitted new drawings uh, last week, but um, uh, then we also had some dialogue with the owners uh, over uh, the weekend and made some further um, uh, changes. Uh, but I can start with the drawings that were submitted on Thursday. And if the board will allow it, I can share with you uh, an update to that. Uh, well, it, it's a bit problematic because we haven't had a chance to review it. Um, nor the public. Nor the, nor the public. Thank you, Sarah. Um, uh, uh, no. so, I understand. Uh, do, you want me to, do you want me just to go over the drawings that you have in front of you? Well, we do, but then we would be basing uh, our comments on, on that which is submitted, which is thought. Final, hold on one second. Let me just confer with counsel. Maybe it makes sense to have him present the new drawings and then just with the understanding that we have to keep the record open. Right. I don't know if it's going to happen tonight. Okay. I mean, that, that, so. We could, haven't looked at them. We, we haven't looked at them. So we're, we're willing to hear you out this evening, um, but we're not going to be able to take a, a vote on it because the public hasn't had the opportunity and we really haven't had a chance. So this is, uh, 
wouldn't it? It's, it's somewhere between, <laughs> it's not a work session. Well, you can, you can review it tonight and make general comments, but you may need to make additional comments upon further review. Right, okay, well, let, let's do it on, on that basis. Uh, and uh, so, but if we can be expeditious about it, okay? So go ahead, Joe. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so um, can I share my screen? Yes. All right, so I'm, I'm going to open up the, uh, just to refresh uh, everyone on the, the, the evolution of this project uh, over the last, over the last well, no, we, we don't, no, we don't no, 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 let, let, let's take a look at the design that you're proposing. Okay. So this is where we're at tonight after uh, a few uh, former public hearings and, oh, and oh. comments. Yes? No, I don't oh, okay. So Kat, Kat is advising you, Joe, that you need to share your screen. I, I believe I am. No. 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 We believe you're not. <laughs> How about now? No. Yeah. Oh, there's a second share. There you go. It's coming up. Hang on. You're sharing your own face. You have to pick a different screen. All right. Yeah. When you, yes. There you go. Thank you. Oh. Okay. okay. You're sharing. There you go. Very good. Okay. All right. So these are, this is uh, very minor changes from the drawings that you have in front of you. Um, we have the last public hearing, there was comments about the, uh, the, the, the massing, I believe I have the minutes in front of me. Um, and we, we went, I guess it was, the takeaway from the last hearing was that it, it lost its, its, cottage, its cottage charm. Um, and we, we went back, uh, made some design revisions. We, we eliminated the transom over the front uh, window uh, over the front door. Um, we tied in the uh, the front of the house with the, the 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 low porch roof. We connected it from from the garage all the way uh, past the front uh, of the house to the to the porch area uh, to tie it all together. In doing that, we stepped the front massing uh, the front most massing of the house further back. Uh, so that it's actually in line with the front of the porch. Um, you can see that on the floor plans. And then we stepped back the second floor of that massing so that it's it's smaller and and not as prominent, which I believe was was really you know the sort of a, um, a, a concern of the boards. Um, we brought back uh, shed dormers on the sides uh, and on the uh, the back side of the house, um, the shed dormers with a reverse over the master bedroom, uh, the chimney we did change. The owners preferred a, a wider, taller chimney, uh, not taller, but wider looking chimney. Um, and I mean, they're, they're, it's very similar to what you saw, just with a different roof style. Um, the roof so, style or roof height? Uh, it's actually, the, I believe it's the same height as it was. It's just before it was a hip roof and now it's a gable. We're still under the pyramid. Uh, we're, we're not at the maximum height. We are at uh, 30, 31 feet, two inches. This, this, uh, I know nothing's built, but you mean the fenestration? Oh, oh. Uh, Joe? Yes, I'm here. Okay. The fenestration's different. 
in the center gate. Yeah, we, we responded to the comments at the last hearing about the transom window. We eliminated that. Um, I, I believe that's, uh, and then we made these windows smaller in the front. I believe that was another response to the board's comments. Hmm? <clears throat> Joe, I, I know I said I didn't want you to necessarily go through the evolution, but do you have a uh, an elevation of the existing house? You mean the prior design? The prior? Uh, there's no house. There's no house there's there. New construction. Oh, so. new construction. Okay, well that will Here's, explain it. Here is. Here was the original. The original. Here was the original. Right, gotcha. Okay. And then gotcha. and we were here and now okay. they're there. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, on my screen, if you can still see it, is where we started out on June right. 13th. Yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah, yeah. I, I've got that. Okay. And right. June 22nd, 27th. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Today. Got it. Thank you. All right. Uh, well, again, uh, we're not going to make any decision on it, but uh, Peter, do you have any comment? Uh, yeah, I would say that, um, well, I, I do prefer the lower uh, plate line of the second floor. Um, you know, you're sort of half dormers now. Um, and, and, you know, I have to say that all your, all the elevations you've done of the main gable have been attractive, you know, except for the first one. I mean, Wait a less that a lazy E. But is the one we're looking at right now the one you submitted or the one you want us to consider to, to comment on tonight? Because what I see on this screen looks like matches the drawings from... Oh, you're right. Th those look like the July 21st drawings. They don't... Can you, are you sure that's the most recent uh, rendition here? On my screen is what you have in front of you. Yeah. Well, uh, now if you could move your screen to what you'd like us to talk about. Uh, there. There we go. Got it. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, yes, I prefer the, I think the lower E, you know, it helps uh, uh, with the neighbors scale-wise, um, lowering the scale. Um, I don't, prior you didn't have that cutout for the, in the roof for your plating window. Why can't you just make that roof shallow so you don't have to cut the roof out, you know, for that, which to me always looks like an afterthought, like somebody didn't work it out, you know what I mean? And you didn't, ha you didn't have that before, so I don't, I don't like it in this rendition. Um, that you have lowered the window in the gable towards the garage. I assume you did that so that, it, that your dropped six-foot ceiling wouldn't go through the middle of it, as it was in your earlier scheme, but you didn't show that. Um, and I still find that uh, second gable, uh, the, the one between the garage and the main gable, completely gratuitous, particularly since there is not gross floor area counted behind it. That volume is not included in your GFA. Okay, Sarah, any comment? Yeah, I, I agree with Pete, Peter's comment, and the, the <laughs> what it really looks like is is um, an attempt to have a master bedroom, but not really count it. Uh, but I, you know, I may be my usual cynical self, but at least it's not six feet going through the fenestration. I think to do without it would be a a, be a much better design if it is, as you say, unfinished space. Mark? Um, I think, this, I think the, the scale of the windows in the center gable looks better, and I, I agree with Peter and Sarah's comments. Okay. John? Um, I agree with everyone's comments. I think this is a much cleaner design than that we've seen before, and I like the fact that the windows on the second floor were reduced in size. Um, well, yeah, I pretty much agree with everyone's comments, other than that. All right. All right. So, uh, and so that's fairly unanimous. And so I'll make my comments unanimous as well. And uh, so the good news, Joe, and um, is that you are moving towards a simpler design. That design would be even simpler without what, uh, without the, the middle gable. Uh, and that's strictly from an architectural standpoint. The fact that it, it's, uh, 
not usable space uh, from the building department makes it therefore somewhat gratuitous. So uh, I would like you to ask your clients, and your clients apparently are here, uh, to consider um, the house without that middle gable. Uh, I know that might be a, a big decision or compromise, but it's something I, uh, the board is fairly consistent on in terms of its concern on the design aspects of the house. So Joe, I, I, I'll turn it back to you and the celebrities, um, if I pronounced your name correctly, um, uh, for any comment. The board, if, if it was to vote tonight, is the sense, uh, is my sense correct that it would be no because of the middle gable? That seems to be a consistent remark, but beyond that, the board doesn't have the actual plans in front of it. So again, these are uh, just more, should be taken as general comments. Okay. Um, and is the, is Peter's, are the comments about the, the windows in the front with the shed roof, is that something that uh, needs, uh, needs further addressing? I mean, we've, we ex so we could do a, a lower, a flatter roof there, but then it's just not going to read. Um, I mean, I, is there is there another suggestion, uh, Peter, for those for the? Well, you could. I don't know. I don't know the sill height of that window, and I, I I'm sure you don't want a high sill height, but maybe it could go up a, up a bit as well. And I wouldn't mind a flatter pitch uh, to get rid of that pocket. Okay. Okay. I'm. Um, uh, I guess I'll confer with my clients, and uh, we'll have to I'll have to adjourn again. Okay. Again, and folks, you're you're here, so you can either you're welcome to comment if you wish. So otherwise, we'll. I, I have really nothing more to say because okay. I, I uh, if, if um, you want to make a comment on the record, if you could just please come up and introduce right. yourself. But but if you don't, that's okay too. You don't have to. Yeah, no, we, we don't want you to force you to say anything if you don't want to. Uh, again, just tell I'm, us. I'm not a trained designer or a trained architect, but Can you just introduce yourself? I'm oh. Deborah Celebrate, 186 Celebrate. Hill Street. Um, but, I, but I have driven around the town, the village. I've taken multiple pictures of homes, beautiful homes in the historic uh, mm -hmm. district, and I have given them to the architect to incorporate yeah. into what yeah. I think is a beautiful, charming little house. Yeah on a flag lot, flag lot property, yeah. which I don't think holds as much architectural review mm -hmm. weight as it does when it faces the street. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking, I, I, I personally did not like the cutout in the roof at first, and Joe will tell you that. I was like, what is that, Joe? I don't even know, what does that look like? And then he sent me a picture, and I was like, oh my God, I love that. Yeah. So maybe if maybe if we brought some photos of what we've seen in the village in the historic village, and we looked at it, I don't understand why that cutout now is not good because it looks adorable on the picture that we have. Um, so that's one issue, and then the other issue is the other gable, which I'm not an architect, so I can't really say yeah. what what exactly you're saying about lowering it is i'm not 100 yeah. percent sure what you guys are getting at with this with the middle gable yeah. i think i think eliminating it is would be yeah but then it doesn't look like a historic village sure it does yeah. no it's, it's oh, well the pictures that i have that are in the village are beautiful charming little homes that i took pictures yeah. of it's a very small yeah. home on a flag lot right no one's looking right. at it from the street right. and i still think it's i still think that i personally took a lot of time and effort to keep the, the charm right. of my property that I have now right. because it's a beautiful property. Yeah. And I really and take a lot of uh, love and care into my property. Everybody knows that. Yeah. And I intend on retiring here. And I would like to be in the home that I feel is a Southampton right. historic home. And, yeah. and I really feel like maybe if we did a 3D of it and you saw it, it's, it's really going to be a beautiful, charming home. Okay. And I hope that we can convince you in some way to allow us to proceed with the drawings. Because if we have, you know, there's time frames and everything to get builders in, and I don't want to lose the builder too. So I, I'm just speaking from my heart right I, now. I know, and, and that's clear, and we do hear you. Uh, and I think 
Uh, and if you've listened to, to other meetings, you'll, uh, I think, appreciate the fact that the board is generally receptive and recognizes the work that you and Joe are doing. So uh, at the same time, uh, the board has expressed some concerns and, uh, um, and shared that with you and, and Joe. And I think it would behoove all of us to perhaps Joe to share his interpretation of what the board was saying right. in that context. Okay. Okay. So and then I guess we, we just agree to discuss it. Adjourn, yeah. And then adjourn? Yeah. That, and yeah. then if we adjourn, what is yeah. well what the, does that mean? Uh, well you'll come back in a couple of weeks. So not this doesn't we don't lose a spot oh, or no 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 no, 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 no. Right. We we look forward to seeing you in a okay. couple of weeks. All right. I mean I, I do need to tell you also that I live in a village called Muncie Park that's a historic village in Manhasset I'm, I'm familiar and with it. my home there is revered and everybody wants to buy it because I did an amazing job on it and I can even bring pictures of it because it, it, it's it's a beautiful charming home right. no, I'm just to, to, to show who I am as a you know we, an we appreciate that. Yeah. And, and I'm familiar with Muncie Park um, and so but we're talking about Southampton. Yes. Joe's heard us, and so mm -hmm. let's let's adjourn. Take Joe's request to adjourn to the next meeting, which okay. we would have to anyway in terms of the submissions. Let me just ask uh, if there's any public comment. Uh, Kat, do you have any? There's obviously. No hands on Zoom. Okay, so I'm going to move now uh, to uh, accept the applicant's Joe's request okay. to adjourn to our next meeting. Okay. Uh, do I have a second on that? Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So we'll see you in a couple Thank of weeks. You. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for Great. letting me speak. Just, oh um, yeah. Of no, course. All the time. Okay. And just just to remind the materials, because we look over everything before we get here. Right. Um, and just to remind the materials have to be in the Thursday prior to the yeah. meeting. Yeah. I know. Because we all get it and we all drive around. I get and, it. You know. Thank you. Yeah, okay, great. <laughs> uh, all right. Thank you, Joe. Th thank, thank you, Deborah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. thank you, Joe. Thank you, Anthony, as well. Okay. All right. Now, next application is Jill and Richard Blanchard. Uh, this is a new application, I believe. All right. Um, yes, yes, we have the affidavits in there. Right there you go. Okay, <laughs> good. All right. Lisa, tell us who you are. Okay. <laughs> yeah, who are you? Lisa Zaloka. I'm the architect for uh, Jill and Richard Blanchard. Do you want the original text? Yes. Thank you. Um, so this is uh, an application to okay, it goes in the file. Um, yep. This is an application to uh, take down and rebuild a little uh, 10 by 17 um, sun porch that is um, on the south side of uh, this nice residence on First Night Lane 55 First Night Lane. Um, there exists a one-story flat roof structure there currently, um, and it's uh, unheated space, um, you know, no, no insulation, no heated, um, and they would like to open it up to the living room and, um, and make it you know, usable year-round. So um, the footprint would stay the same, the height would stay the same. We were um, proposing a little low, you know, two foot um, balcony around the top, just uh, aesthetic. There's no, there's no roof deck up there. Mm -hmm. um, the paint, you know, it'd be panelized uh, where, there's, where there's actual surface that's not glass, and that would be painted the same color as the trim on the existing house. Okay. Comments uh, from right to left, Mark. Um, not th I think it looks fine. My, my only question is, those, and we're sure because those look like they're being drawn as doors out to the balcony, but they are not doors there. No, windows. those they're actually they're they're what's existing. Um, they are up there, but they don't. They don't open. No. Do they open? <laughs> do they open currently? I don't. I don't know. I didn't actually try to open them. Um, okay. There's no railing on the current roof deck, and, and there's no... So they're not currently doors? Yeah, they're not. Okay. 
<laughs> that was my only question. But there's no change to those. They stay exactly as they are. Okay. And the railing is only, like I said, it'll be a short little it's railing. Too, and they're going to put short. pebbles down. You know, they're not going to put yeah. nothing around. It looks like the picture. I don't, do they even go down? Are they flush to the roof? Yeah, I don't The windows, or is it looks like there's a sill? Yeah, there's a sill. There's a sill. Yeah. yeah. I, did, I didn't actually try it, okay. honestly. <coughs> uh, Sarah? Um, I went to look, and I actually prefer the the design of the 1940s porch. The, the muttons have um, real character, and um, the paneled sections do. And I would not add, or aesthetically, I don't think it makes any sense to add the balcony onto the existing building. There's no precedent for it. I mean, on the building itself. Um, I realize it's not in the best shape, but I'm not c totally convinced that some of the existing um, doors can't be reused. And, and the design also. The windows appear to have been changed. They're still two over two, but the muttons are, are very, very narrow. And uh, I think that the existing um, configuration of the porch is a, a better design. There's only, there's only one door currently, and that's the door. Well, the all of the, the windows and the door. Yeah, the, the, there's windows in the back, the windows that face west don't actually operate. Yeah, those, they don't actually um, currently work, so they're, well, they're it, not in. I'm not asking that they work. I'm just saying that, that the presence of them is, is superior to what's presented. Okay, in terms of detailing? De or? Detailing, heft. Okay, so would you be amenable to new windows that had the same mutton characters? Probably, but mm -hmm. I think that, that what's there is better than what you're presenting. Okay. Peter? Um, yeah, I, I, like, I like it what's there too. Just be, I know it doesn't match the building, but it, it obviously came later, you know, as a later addition to uh, the it building. It was. I mean, the framing for it is actually conventional lumber. It's not. Yeah, no. I, I mean, I, I kind of like the difference, but I mean, I'm not. It's not a hill I'm going to die on. Um, you know, I, uh, I, I, fi I find the balustrade excessive as well. And the, the corner columns, the new corner columns are, are, are very thick. So I, but oh, that wasn't, those aren't columns, that was that's just pi a recess. The pilasters. Pi pi yeah, I know, pi oh, sorry, pilasters, yeah. But they're too thick. Yeah, that, I find them, yeah, I just, I don't know. I mean, I said, you know, if, if we hadn't seen what was there before, I, I'd probably be fine with it. <laughs> That's sort of. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's th I mean, what's there now? Obviously, the windows are, are single glazed, and they're not. You know, it's not something that's set to be. I understand. You know, yeah. but if you copy, as, but as if you copy what's there, I think you'll have a better design. Uh, John. Um. Well, I, but while I don't think it's necessary to actually copy what was there, I, I like, you know, the, the the character of the existing windows because it's, it's a sun porch. You. you, you the, the windows makes it much more open, and, and that, that was the original intent, I assume. Um, that aside, I mean, I, I think the railing is a bit heavy-handed for uh, what's required, and the fact that it doesn't exist now seems a bit of a unnecessary ornamentation. I can remove the railing. That's purely. Yeah, design. like I said, the, 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 I, I'm not married to the, you know. The way it looks now, I just like the idea of, of, of windows all around, uh, which you've kind of you, yeah. you've almost accomplished with the design. So, Lisa, what does the so right now it's almost like a solarium? Is that it? Yeah, the, the door. There, there's a single door coming out of the living room. Um, well, pair of doors coming out yeah. of the living, but you know they're they're the exterior break. For right. You know, this, this room has no heat, it has no air conditioning, it, it has, it's, so it's only usable certain periods of right. time, obviously. So, um, so they want to make it part of the house. Right. They want to make it, you know, but energy could combined they, and all that. Could they things. not do that and keep all the fenestration the same? Or well, it, it's, I mean, it's a lot of, it's a lot of single glazed glass that, yeah. you know, it's not, it's not really going to get us our energy <laughs> reading. Yeah. Um, you know, we would like to insulate the roof. We'd like to, you know, like I said, the the foundation, the framing on underneath is is all conventional framing. So, 
I don't, I don't, I don't know what age it is, but it's not. Um, and and there aren't windows of a contemporary efficiency that are closer to the existing sure, you windows. Could, you, could, you could reorder windows to match them that were new windows that were insulated. Kat, do you want to show the photograph? Uh, well, I think she has, if she can zoom in close enough on it. That's as far as it'll zoom. Yeah. So that's I just sent it to you. Okay. Yeah, uh, maybe it's just the black and white drawing that accentuates the difference. Although the, those are individual panels that are, and these are six. They're looking to get a little side wall on either side. You know, in, yeah. in the picture you can see that the glass, the, the floor to ceiling glass yeah. on, the, on the south side goes all the way down. They're looking, she's looking to get a, a small built-in on the one side. So that's the reason that we're kind of trying to get a little bit of wall. Um, on either side. It wasn't, I mean, really it was paneling, not like, you know, no form of right. eyelash. One or side has a, it's a just panel, pan, you know, the other doesn't. Yes, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just panels, not, I, I wasn't trying to create any kind of a column or eyelash or look. It was really just the panels. And I mean, I, I could put a horizontal division, you know, that matches the horizontal division on the, on the east and west sides as well. No, I wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. No, it's, Sarah, it's not coming through yet. Okay, that's all right. Way too much I have right no now. service here at all. I'm, I'm, I mean, the railing, again, you know, was purely an aesthetic um, detail. The, the relocation of the pair of French doors from the inside of the house to the outside, um, you know, we were, we were I, trying I, to maintain uh, that we don't have as many divided lights, obviously, as what's there. I, I think what you hear the board saying is that because they've seen what's there and what's there, whether it be added on at some later date or not, is charming as it's there and seems to be a simple addition to the house that also is separate from the house and very, uh, and your design, which is a good design, somehow detracts a little bit of that innate charm that's there. Uh, and um, I think that's I, I, I think that's what I'm capturing from, from the board members. Yeah, and yeah, and the narrowness, uh, you, it, your drawing is not exact, obviously, but the narrowness of the two over two um, just sort of doesn't look as um, I know. Isn't as good as the existing. Uh, so, uh, and I, and we know what you're trying to accomplish. You're trying to make the house usable. And, and, and uh, is there the, well, ch the chance to go back to the window folks and see if you could, you know, as Mark was saying, come up with something that is more akin to what's there? And not two over two with very narrow little muttons and, and mullions? I mean, that. Well, it, that's, I mean, I actually had them as casements, not as double humps. Yeah, um, those are casements. If, um, I mean, is it the divided light that you're opposed to, or the I'm, windows I'm, themselves? I'm opposed to the, the lack of gravitas. And when you put the little casement things, it just looks like um, nothing. And I think the existing 1940 sports has a lot of charm that you that's, that's missing. Okay, so but that's detailing on the windows. Are you, are you are you acceptable of the windows that I have, and it's just the detailing, or is it that you want a different window I think configuration I, altogether? What, what I'm hearing is they're preferring to go back to double hungs, with the same. The, the, or, the windows or, in the back are not double. Okay, what well, they go back to the same patterning on the windows in the back that exists currently. Okay, the windows in the back are, are actually sliders, so I'll, I'll have to go back and look. We'll pull the, pull the picture up. Just Am I reading that right, Sarah? Yeah. What, what, what you're preferring is to go back to a mutton pattern that matches the existing in the current. Exactly, because the, the two over two that's being represented, I don't think is right. 
Well, like I said, I mean, that, that's growth pattern. I can change the growth pattern, but, but that's different than if I'm supposed to be changing all the windows. And the, the four panel on the south side? It, right now, it's a, it's a sun porch, and I understand the need to, to do something. But I, I think that what, um, what exists, as I keep saying, is superior to what's being presented. And uh, I think that if I rule the world, you'd <laughs> come back with, with something better. I think you're capable of something better. Okay. Yes, Lydia John? <laughs> yeah. uh, let me open it up to public comment if there is any. Uh, there is none. So we said we will. Ex uh, I move that we accept the applicant's request to adjourn. Uh, second on that. Second. Second by Mark. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, Lisa. I know it's a, it's a, it, it's a challenge. We, we know you're up to the task. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Lisa. Okay. Uh, okay, so moving on to public hearings, non-historic. Uh, the heart of the Hamptons uh, is a pending adjournment. Uh, we then have a request for an adjournment on the application of Andrew Spreitzer to adjourn to um, August 8th. So I move that we accept the applicant's request to adjourn to August 8th. Uh, second on that from someone? Second. Second by Peter. All in favor? Aye. Uh, similarly, on 68 Pelham Street, uh, LLC, 68 Pelham Street, uh, applicant requests adjournment to August 8th. I move that we accept the applicant's request to adjourn to the 8th. Uh, second on that from someone by second. Mark. Uh, all in favor, aye. 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 Okay. So that is adjourned. And then the next application is for 131 Herrick Road, LLC. Okay. Okay. Can you turn the air conditioner on? <laughs> <laughs> if someone could hand me that remote. I would be eternally grateful it's stuck to the side of the AC. That was pretty um, cool. Thank you. Came. I have to put this one on because there's audio. Okay. Oh, I put it on, but now I can't hear you guys. Okay. 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 Add, s add sound booth to the list. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so to our list of needs. Or so central. <laughs> lady and gentlemen, please tell us who you are. I'm Ann Schwad, and I'm the homeowner at 131 Herrick Road. And right. <coughs> Michael Kirschman, architect. Okay, great. And at our last meeting, there was uh, a good deal of discussion about fenestration, uh, including multiple styles, as well as the uh, dark, in fact, black trim. Um, and then there uh, was discussion about gables uh, and dormer pockets pockets excuse me so I'm gonna let you Michael and Ann tell us what you folks have done I, I'll turn it over to Michael in a minute I just want to give you a little background of me and who I am and where I've been sure. and, and what this house is gotcha. um, I've been out here for 30 plus years started on post lane which is right around the corner yep. mm -hmm. Um, in a small two-bedroom house. Then we moved to James Street, yep. which was literally around the corner, into a small two-bedroom house, um, which we then moved <coughs> up. Um, and now that the kids have gone, I moved around the corner yet again to Herrick Road. So I'm very familiar with our very little neighborhood, which has been really meaningful to us. I mean, my children consider this home. I consider it home. I've watched the whole entire neighborhood transform from the early 90s to today. So all of those tiny little two bedroom uninsulated houses have now become mega houses, 6,000, 7,000 square feet. And the styles have changed from pretty much bland, pretty boring ranch houses to I think architecturally much more interesting um, houses. And I think people have tried to 
conform to the, you know, the style of the neighborhood. We don't, we're not in a historic district, and so every house doesn't look like a 1940s house. I mean, what's happened in the evolution is that there are some houses that look more modern, some houses that look very traditional. The one that's going up right across the street from me has little gingerbread details and all kinds of stuff, which is not my style, but God bless them, you know, it, it, they're doing what they want. That was a little tiny pink stucco house before they knocked it down last year. So things have evolved and I, you know, I care a lot about this neighborhood. I care a lot about the way it looks. I in no way want my house to be the standout ugly house, okay? Um, I care a lot about it. And so, um, you know, I've been looking to do something that's a little more modern, but yet traditional. So um, I think we heard you loud and clear in terms of what you didn't like and we tried to accommodate almost every single thing and I think every single thing in different ways. Okay, so I shall turn it well, over to could. Michael to talk okay. about yeah, what, what we've changed. Um, right. Again, I don't want to be the ugly house on the street. I don't want to be the outstanding, but there are there are, there are houses on the street on Herford right now that I'm like, God knows what's going on there. There's so many different things happening. I don't want that. You know, I really want a clean looking modern traditional house that will you know that I'm good. it's my forever house at this point i'm not moving again okay. but I will <laughs> yeah. we very much appreciate that and michael okay. michael's a skilled architect so go ahead michael okay i'll use all my skills for time can we, can we <laughs> focus in on, on these or is that uh well we're going to okay. be right. it's not going to be one in lieu of the other it's we'll look at the renderings as well as I the see. elevations okay. I was just so the uh, if you want to start with Gentlemen and ladies, do you want yeah. to start with the elevations sure. or with the renderings? Well, if I could just uh, preempt it by generally what okay. we addressed okay. from yeah, the board sure. of concerns last time as an okay. overview, and yep. then we'll certainly have an open dialogue. Sure. Okay. So we, we took heed to the to the objections of, of the two weeks ago meeting, and just on the front elevation, I'll focus there. What you see removed now are the big swoops, the swooping gables that mm -hmm. we had before, right. straighten them out. Kat, can you zoom in on those, do you yeah. think? It's yes. more of a linear. points to what he's talking about. Okay, sure. yeah. Do you want the elevation? Oh, okay. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. And then you have to draw them. Uh, this is now a linear gable. Uh, they were reduced for the swoops from before, so those have been, uh, and they've also been uh, scaled down just slightly, so they're about two feet below the envelope line, so the whole home has been reduced that way. Uh, you'll see as an obvious removal, the center gables, that, that third gable that was in the center. Uh, we addressed the board's concerns about that. Um, we, and so that was a, a change. We also uh, removed all the transoms and you know the different types of windows, consistently tried to keep a window pattern. Mm -hmm. Uh, they are double hungs now. Uh, we address the board's concerns there. Try to establish a pattern around the house, wrapping the house. Uh, there are some slight variations on it, but typically the windows are double hung that you see. Um, we, in going back to the front porch again, there was a double set of columns. We eliminated one set of columns, and we also mm -hmm. reduced the size of that uh, little porch just to, you know, somewhat give protection from the weather, but also scaling it to the front elevation. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the other concerns is was the black windows that we proposed last time. Well, we softened that, and we're, we're proposing a dark bronze window from Anderson. I have a sample color here today. Well, uh, that's also what's resent, represented by the front door. Uh, in this case, they're not, those are wood doors that would be a painted a color to match mm -hmm. the windows, that softer brown color. Um, I think and that the generally the is it. I'm sorry, the uh, this shingling, is it white or is it uh, cedar? Or is it the shingles that haven't changed, they're white, they're, they're, they're Alaskan cedar painted white. Those were the major changes. There. Okay, so I, I can, can, can you we want to talk about the back of the house now? Yeah, can we just look at the rend rendering? Uh, cat, can you get any closer than that? Oh yeah, sure. um, the one that I'm on. Yeah, the sure. front. What portion of the house? No, I just want to look at the windows. So, 
The windows are not framed bronze, or they are. The window in the frame or bronze or bronze with a bronze coating. They're two over one. With a white frame okay. around them, so we've split them too. Also, so there's a white piece going through the middle of the bedroom window, right. so, for example, to soften it. And I noted that the house that's being built on Toilson with those gigantic windows, I saw that they were the this dark bronze. So I, I not black, and well, black is still my preference. I mean, I think the dark brown would also look really pretty. Okay. The, the trim that you see is a consistent four inch right. white trim. Michael, if you could just share that sample with us. Sure. So the dark bronze, the dark bronze in, in circles, hand it to and, Peter. The, oh, and we're proposing this color, which they told me at the, at the paint store. The bittersweet chocolate was also. Or I may so stain the painted. door. I may stain okay. the door so it's a, the same color to right. match. Gotcha. And so this, is, solid this is the color. Color. Oh, the drawer, okay. So which of these? Bittersweet chocolate, it's, okay, I, I, I just have to add, we've been okay. working up to the last second year. Right. These drawings, the drawings that you have had a, still had a, a mistake, actually, I'll call it, or a revision that we did to the front elevation. These have been corrected, I do have copies. Okay. It, it's essentially the same drawings, there's some clarity mm -hmm. So I, I would, I think we saw this like smooth in what we submitted as well. Yeah, we that out. no longer. The, the, the swoop is now linear. Okay. So, thank you. Does the building department have these with you? No, I do. I'm presenting these. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, and we present. We submitted on on Thursday at noon the right. set that you have, and these were as of yesterday. All right. The only the only difference is that that's the uh, gable is straighter. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. Right. Straight here. There was a slight. Slight. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Right. Sweet. Sweet. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Mark had asked you were yeah. asked to look at the back. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Or? Because okay. you can take us to the back. Now that'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Moving this one. Back okay. You know, the rear elevation, um, <clears throat> we carry the same, you know, window scale with double hung windows across the top. Those are consistent. These are, are French doors uh, that, that let light into the second floor, floor hallway predominantly and, and do um, have access to a small uh, porch down here. The, oh, let's see now. And, and, and also the <clears throat> on the on the ground floor, these are French wood doors, as well as French wood doors in the center. What you see on on your left, uh, this is a kitchen, and there's a kitchen counter below. So the kitchen faces the back. And we did eliminate the center dormer on on the rear elevation, and those. Those gables match the, the front gables, those are straight as well. Right. And, and the railing you changed from metal to, to wood? The, the, met, the railing is a wire rail system with vertical posts. Oh. Um, we, we, vertical wires, I should say. Last time we proposed a horizontal railing system that was uh, maybe a little bit too ambitious to be too modern, and, and now we, we're emphasizing the, the vertical on these. So it is a wire rail system, but the, 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 the wires are vertical. With a bronze end finished on the, on the rails to touch. And the metal roofing we have is going to be the weather duct color as well. It, yeah, it's a it's a zinc coated stainless steel that will weather the gray, you know, the dull gray, typical. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, let me turn it over to the board for comments. John, we'll we'll start with you if you feel like it. Sure. Um, first of all, I I would like to see a, a consistent window design all around, um, instead of one design in the front and one design, design in the back. I, I think the railing design is much too modern for the house. 
Uh, I prefer to see something a little more traditional. And uh, on the, the uh, south elevation, those two windows on either side of the central window over the doorway just kind of stare at me in a strange way. I, I just don't think they look as, as good as they might uh, with maybe a triple window over the door or maybe just a double window. Um, and finally, the uh, the windows, I the, call them bronze, they're, they're, they read black. And I, I know we've, we've uh, approved windows. If you're looking for a contrast that are more of a, a, a gray tone, uh, but anything that's, you know, that's, that's, that bronze or dark is it's something I, I just want to prove. Um, Mark, well, you will, uh, Mark, and what we'll do is we'll hear from the board and then we'll give you and Michael okay. a chance. Peter. Okay, Peter, go ahead. Yeah, the fenestration is, um, is mostly correct. Thank you, I think. The gables, thank you, looks a lot better. Um, in terms of the fenestration, I do think that the two small windows flanking the central uh, uh, window over the front door, you know, they're fine to be there, um, I, I, and I know you need them there. Um, I think they should be narrower, you, you know, just pulled further away from the center window and made a little more square. They just seem a little, the, the proportion seems, okay. you know, all the other windows have a vertical proportion, right? right. And then these have a horizontal mm -hmm. proportion. So if they were more square, or, or, or you know, or, or, then I, I think that would be fine. Um, the, uh, something I did not mention last time, which I will this time, is that, I, first of all, the, the porch is much improved. You know, it's, it's scaled, I think, nicely with the house. But could you uh, please line up the uh, entablature, you know, the, the fascia that is directly above the columns? You know, traditionally, that lines up with the columns below, you know, if you're looking at classical yes, architecture. Yes. And this is a classically inspired house. Yeah. And that would just make it look, I think, that much more correct or authentic. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then the thing you didn't address are those dormer pockets. Yeah. And um, it, it seems, I know I look, I, I, you're right at the GFA, I understand your dilemma, but I, I think if you shrank the first floor a couple feet, in width, you could fill out <coughs> the um, flat portion of the uh, uh, pocket, and, and and you don't have to and you don't have to do one continuous dormer either. You could just do two. I, I know you're, you need GFA, yeah. and I'm just yeah. suggesting that maybe you do two smaller dormers that are just the size of the windows, instead of instead of the whole um, width of the house. And if you could find a way to uh, you know, shrink the house just enough to get those that square footage up there in those four places. I think that could be. I think it could be resolved. Um, and that's really that remains my objection. Sarah, uh, the entablature lining up with the columns also was something that had bugged me, uh, and. I, I'm not particularly wedded to the um, the vent that you have that little A and P <laughs> okay. on the um, the garage. I, I oh, the think garage. yeah. I, I think that if you it doesn't really marry well with with the uh, the cleanness of of your um, main house. Okay. But that's just me. I have a. Um, I mean, I, I don't, I know addressing it that it's so far off the street and then- Yeah, I saw it was way back. It's gonna be putting, you know, 10, 12 foot high privet around it. It, do, it is pretty far set back. I don't know if- This is talking about? Yeah. I don't really care. Yeah. I'm not gonna, <laughs> okay. let's, let's yeah. drop it. Drop it. Yeah. Drop it, Thank right. you. Thank, Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah, and the, and the, 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 the I, I, I do think that you could, you, the bronze is is very close to black. I think maybe you might be able to come up with a color that's not quite as black as. It looks like when you're when you're looking at these windows, it looks like somebody has basically knocked your eyes out. You know, they 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 drop out 
when they're that dark? Yeah, the, the problem is, you know, the dark mullions against the dark glass, you don't see the mullions anymore. So all the scale that a mullion imparts vanishes. And your architecture, really, you know, that, that attention to detail drops out. No, I, I understand that in, in this case, uh, it is, a, you know, my client's preference. I understand. Have those. No. I, I think in some way the, the, the argument that there is one, the better word for argument, is that more of the modern homes have this dark, you know, white contrast. And, and you know, she feels penalized to say that I'm building a new home and I've got to, you know, go back oh. to an old standard. Yeah. And this it's, is so it's yeah, become, you, sort of, it. it's become, a, it's become right. a tick. Basically, yeah. and, and it sort of played but itself out in, in my mind. So well, but, but at the same time, Michael, in speaking, made your case against you. This this board um, applies judgment uh, in the context of harmony. That doesn't mean that every house is identical. It doesn't mean that every house, whether it's in the historic district or not, has to be a traditional Southampton house. But at the same time, you know, your very statement that you're trying to create something modern is not necessarily in har harmony. It doesn't mean it's disharmonious necessarily in, in different elements, but certain elements may be, and then when you put it together. So, and so take what Sarah and Peter <coughs> and, and John are saying in terms of how the house reads, and if you're dead set on sticking to that color, then the board will vote appropriately. On the other hand, I think the board is sharing with you their concerns, and we can only ask that you take that into context. So let me just turn it over to Mark, and then I'll give it back to you. Um, my comments, I think we made great strides. The two comments mm -hmm. I have are actually the same two I had last week, which are, I think the fenestration in the back of the house doesn't match the fenestration in the rest of the house. I think it's inconsistent. Um, and I think the modern railing material still is a little too modern against the, r the role they're trying to go where modern meets traditional. That would be my two comments. So maybe that's an easier one we can talk about because as we left last week, we were standing out in front of this building. I noticed there's steel railings around this building. It doesn't have to be wire, but, but clearly those railings were put up probably 100 years ago. I mean, they're very rusty and they need to be replaced, but this is an old historic building. So if it's the wire that's bothering you, we could make it steel to match whatever the color of the windows ends up being, if that's Style and context. Yeah, I, th I think in this case, what, what Mark was saying, and I think the other folks was, is the material is part of what is seems to be incongruous with the general style of traditional ha house. Um, I don't actually have an opinion one way or the other what the material is. Right. I think this current application is too contemporary, which is probably the wire. But uh, you know, if, if there was another metal option that you wanted to present, um, uh, to me, it's not the material as it, it, as it is the wire application of it. Right. It's a very okay. contemporary. And then, uh, and then when I see, you know, when I walk around the back of the house, it does not look to me like the same house as the front of the house because the changes in the fenestration. And it, it's considered more contemporary from the back than in traditional from the front, but it doesn't look like one house to me. Yeah, well, which was actually my comment last time. Let me try to understand that a little bit better. So, the the preference on the second floor on the three sides is that is that double hung casement that that wraps around essentially. And when you get to the back, they become elongated double. -hung. No, so right now, right now, floor? no, yeah. right out across the front of the house. I've got, well, let's go to the side of the house. I see two over ones. The front of the house, two I see ones. two over ones, and yeah. I go back, and they're all clear windows oh, okay. across all the way across the back I with no break in the, the glazing. You're just saying that. Yeah, and I, d I just think that makes the house, the back of the house, look like a contemporary house, and the front of the house look like a traditional house, but together they don't look like the so same so house. So it'll be for the, those bedrooms, because the, everything else is sort of like a, a long French door on the top. The, one, the ones in the well, kitchen the, are just kitchen windows. Mm -hmm. So it's the bedrooms upstairs where you want to see two over one. Yeah. The flanking ones on the gables. The what? The flanking windows on the gables. Yeah. You want two over one. Yeah. And we had two over one there. Yeah. That would help. Yep. Okay. I mean, Peter, uh, Peter, what do you think? Huh? Um, you know the. Uh, I'm not as concerned about the back being different because you can 
truly don't see it from the, from the, from the street. Um, but I do think if you just make the flanking second floor windows two over ones, I, I, that would be it. That would be fine. I think that would, I think that would solve all your problems. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I understand like you want you want more problems. glass in the back. <laughs> I like solving all my problems in one thing. Yeah, well, there we go. Well, we like solving all your problems in one thing too. <laughs> it's appropriate. It's not our goal to have more meetings. Let's build on that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, anyway. Okay. Appreciate it. No, Thanks. Appreciate it. Um, so can we go. I, I wrote these down one by one. Yeah, but I, I need to address these inset dormers. And okay. I, and I, oh. I've sat through you know other meetings. I looked at some meeting notes online, and I, I understand the position on, on this board about them. I, I just want to tell you, the, again, just the progression. I, I want to make a long story out of it, but we had these inset dormers since the beginning. They were approved. Yes, okay. I don't. Um, they, they're there for a purpose. They're not there to, they're not there to add a, an element just on a whimsy. But they're there to add that full height window to that second floor bedroom. Those bedrooms now are on the, on the very small side. Mm -hmm. they, they can be interesting because they have interesting cathedral ceilings going on, and, and I'm okay with it. But, and, and Peter, you touched on it. In order to actually push them out, and, and you know, we studied this for, for, for ad infinitum, to try to push them out where you don't have these inset dormers. And I, I'm telling you, just on my client's behalf, on my, and, and on my behalf, where we have them located is the maximum GFA for the floor. Peter, you hit on it exactly. Moving them around, trying to manipulate the roofs and, <coughs> and do, you know, other gymnastics, has to, you're forced to redesign the whole entire house. We did it one time already because we had to eliminate 200 square feet. My client was okay with it, reducing it. We, we followed, you know, the, the current zoning and we were able to do it. But I am telling you the, the amount of effort that it went through just to not have inset dormers, which, by the way, and I know you know because you live here like we all do, on Herrick Road itself, and right around that surrounding area, there's plenty of homes with inset. So the house right across that's being built right now from me has inset dormers. So I, I really... I really would strongly urge the board to take, just to understand what we're going through to make to make this happen. And, and I do believe that you know my client is is not going to be using these for anything else other than letting natural light in and, and air into the bedroom where you can where you can access access them. Um, that is the sole purpose of it. They are there for a purpose. So that, I don't. I, I mean, I could show you some photos. Of homes that are even adjoining that have them, but I know you, you, you folks have seen them. We've seen them, I know, and it, it just, it's, you know, it's a, it's, it's a traditional house and it's just not a traditional detail. Okay? I hate dormers totally, okay? <laughs> like, I would rather have no dormers <laughs> ever, but when, when we submitted these original plans, they said, get your Airbnb approval, get everything in, and you're locked into the old footage. And Chris Talbot reinforced that, and then he left, and then, you know, we've gotten stuck in a bit of a, yeah. a yeah. buyer yeah. of changing circumstances. But, but I, 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 and we understand, but in fairness, the, the, that logic doesn't hold. And, and this is not directed necessarily towards you, but you've said it, and but it's applied to other folks. Um, you can build a house out to the maximum GA. That's what is allowed. This right. board sits here as to what could well, what should be built, and so if you hate dormers, then I have no you, choice at this point. No, you do have you do have that are usable. you do have a choice. You know, you, you you could build a house that's fifteen hundred square feet if you chose to. You're choosing to build a house to the maximum, so you're making a choice. So for you to tell me that you have no choice is absurd logic. Okay. I, I, I I understand I, I understand, I understand what your intention is. Yes. But it doesn't, it's right. not logical. But if you hate dormers, don't put dormers in. There's a concern from one of the board members about inset dormers. You have the option, Michael's a skilled architect, if he chooses and if you choose to build a house that's still within the uh, zoning code, you can. So again, we're going to adjourn um, as to take this all back and it's up to you what you want to come back with and then the board will vote. Okay, and just to 
to respond to that, and I, I, I hear you. Yes, I can build 1,500 yeah. square. That's not what I invested in, and that's not my intention. No. Um, no. But there, it is very consistent to have these dormers with many of the houses all around us. Okay. In fact, across the street, next door, around. So it's not that it's that out of character for South Hampton okay. or this house. Okay. okay. And that's sort of where we've landed. So gotcha. I'm not. I, I cannot take any more square footage away from the bottom floor because it will work for me, which means it's totally designed. So that's gotcha. we you know, that's our issue, okay. and we, we appreciate. Uh, so what I have on my list that you'd like to see is some more discussion about the dormers. We'll come back with a different railing. We'll show you the new windows in the back. Yeah. Uh, we'll take off the top of the garage. Um, make okay. the front windows a little bit more vertical for the bathrooms. Okay, and just a, a and question. And the porch, line up the entablature. Yeah, yeah. 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 um, in terms of the windows, since there do seem to be a lot of these bronze windows and black windows, I mean, you say come back and propose yet another color, but we just don't want to keep spinning wheels. Are we, would a dark gray be something that's, because I've seen those as well. Well, I need to see sam samples, first of all, of what you're proposing, but I, I think oh, a great... Yeah, yeah, we have the samples here. Okay, this sorry. Exactly. All right. But, but, but are you saying the windows themselves will also be, they're not going to be clear windows? Are they clear white? Yeah. The windows themselves will be clear windows. Clear, I don't have clear any glass. intention of putting clear glass. dark glass. Yeah, well, yeah. It, they'll have to meet the energy code. So right. Whatever the energy yeah. code is. Yeah. Right. The right. The windows yeah, themselves would not be black. It's no, just no, no, the... No, no, no. Why, why not a mid-tone gray or something that provides the contrast, but just not the extreme of the dark color? Uh, yeah, you put them on the table again. Well, yeah, and I think John's, so when I was saying to um, Anne and Michael, you've heard the comments from the board, so it's, you know, there are other swatches on there. Uh, should you choose to tone it down a little bit, I think you'll probably get a more receptive response from the board members. This is but, quite toned down when I went and looked at the actual again, window, so maybe we need to bring the window in. We, I, maybe that'll help you see it's really not maybe. black at all. People, so. people have done that. Okay, <laughs> yeah. then we'll do it. <laughs> um, to for customize and have them specially painted to a special color, I think is going to be that's not going to work for us. So we're trying to go with the, the colors. White so, looks awfully nice. Yeah, white's, white's good too. You know what? I got white. <laughs> I'm done with white windows. So, anyway, I promise you, you, you 10 years from now, you may think yeah. this wow. is going to look lovely. <laughs> yeah, so it is going to be pretty sure. Yeah, we'll get there. It'll be beautiful. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Did we want to take public, public comments? Yes, are there public comments? <laughs> no hands raised out there. All right. So, Michael uh, Ran, since you want to. You've asked for an adjournment. We will recognize that, and I move that we accept the applicant's request to adjourn. Second by Mark. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Great. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Next, WLK Development Group Inc. at 228 White Street. Brian, tell us who you are. Hello, Brian. Good evening. Hi. Um, uh, Brian Glasser, 801 Motor Parkway, Park North. Um, representing my client, uh, 228 White Street. And just wanted to run through some of your comments from our last hearing. Um, starting off with the windows on this reverse gable. Um, I have a landscape plan as well, so the tree kind of interfered with the architecture, so we kind of faded it out a little bit. Um, that's what this kind of, cut, like this outline of a tree is. But, so on the reverse gable here, we have, as opposed to three windows, we put two, we removed one from the first and second floor. Uh, hold on, just, uh, Kat, can you get in on that? Okay. Okay, thank you. So the reverse gable here coming through, removed, there was the glass to wall ratio we thought was a little too much, which I agreed with it actually, I think it looks nice, the portion here. 
So we have two double hung windows on the first and second floor as opposed to three. Um, some of the other comments were the columns and lines, they should have been smaller. We reduced the size of the columns. Looking at this, I think it looks much better. Um, they were oversized, especially when we get to So we reduced the size of all the columns. Thank you. And yeah, I think that probably would have changed in the field, but it'll be picked up on here anyway, just in case. <laughs> Um, Sarah also mentioned we do have chamfered corners, so I think that does help reduce the, the sharpness of it. It's a little more softer, mm -hmm. so I think that's good as well. Um, one of the other major changes was the, was the roof line. Uh, I ended up simple, simplifying it, whereas we had two reverse gables. We changed this to a jerkin head style, which looking back at the rear, I thought it's kind of nice. We have a simple gable here and then another hip kind of gives you just a few areas where it pops through mm -hmm. in the front and the back, so I think that's a nice balance between the two. Mm -hmm. um, some of the items that I've spoken to my clients about, and they're, they're pretty, um, they really wanted the, this pitch pocket here on the side for the uh, stairwell. Um, it's on the east side. We thought, you can't really see it there. I could show, uh, show it to you on an elevation. Um, there's something, you know, we made quite a few changes. Um, but they did feel strongly about trying to let natural light into the, this is the eastern side. And the one thing I was going to try to do to mitigate the appearance of it is maybe make it all cedar. So it wouldn't stand out as much and it would blend in with the house. Um, like I said, it's the east side, it's over the stairwell, it's kind of high up. So it was just more of a, as opposed to doing a, you know, a skylight, I thought it would be nice to have just keep that little recessed pitch pocket in there, three windows, which is centered up on the staircase, so I thought it was a, it's a nice element. Um, the other item that you mentioned was the transoms on the first story. The one, just while we were designing this house, this element here was going to be more of like a story and a half to two-story structure, which if you look at it, you know, a, a two-story structure or windows are fairly high up. I mean, to, to maintain these three windows, these transoms on the first floor, um, you know, we, we have a landscape plan just showing some plantings. Um, we didn't really think it was going to be too much light infiltration. We are, I can show the landscape plan, which also shows that we are proposing to, not to jump around, um, we are pro proposing here to at, uh, I think it was Western, anywhere starting off at uh, 8 to 10 feet, uh, what was it, Western Red Cedar, uh, plant things around the perimeter. Um, and that, those are all the changes we made, and the landscape plan, if you guys have questions about that, I can try to help you. And I believe the uh, builder that's working on the property, he, um, he spoke to the neighbor, I don't know if you guys got letters. Yeah. So you got letters and we addressed their concerns and they spoke to them. So from my understanding, I don't know if we have to go through all that, but it seems like everyone's happy and they, they did mention how the the trees were rotting away and the root system wasn't stable. So that, I know you guys, uh, you know, I wasn't happy about it either that they took them down, but supposedly the neighbors are happy, the neighbors in the vicinity of the area of the property are happy with what we're proposing. So. And like I said, Ralph, I think Ralph is available if you guys have any right. questions about that relationship and what's going on in the tree situation. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll hear from the comment. We hear your characterization of the neighbor's comments. That's, mm -hmm. uh, we'll let the neighbors speak for themselves. Okay. Um, and so, but let me let the board members speak for themselves. Uh, anybody want to start? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Well, I think the house looks great, you know, for getting rid of that second gable. I think it's um, <coughs> really completely fixed. It's very handsome. You know, I still have an issue with that pocket, but I don't want to talk about that right now. <laughs> um, but the, the, the volume of the house is, is, I think, is good, and I like that the um, porch has an eave at the top of the first floor, which will you know, make it fit in with the neighboring ranch houses better, you know. Um, 
and I think that's an important gesture that, that you did very well. Um, my, <clears throat> my, except for the pocket dormer issue, the my, I, I, I object to the the front yard parking again, and I know it's allowed, but you know I, I, I looked at your site plan and I think you could fit them all in the back. If you know car, you can park cars five feet away from the property line, so if. If you moved your garage over five feet, you would have room, move it um, 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 westward five feet, you would have room to have a, a parking space next to the garage. And, um, and your garage is 14 feet wide, which is 14 by 27, which is very wide. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't need to be that wide. It could be 12 feet wide. Um, <clears throat> so that could, and your pool, 18, 18 feet, it could, be, it could be diminished by a couple of feet <clears throat> to make up that five feet that I'm, you know, suggesting you push the garage over. And then you could, then you could just stack the, to have two cars, one in the garage, one adjacent, one to the east, and then two cars out in the open right in front of it. And if you felt that was too close to your screen porch, you could push that entire garage back, you know, as far as that 10-foot um, accessory building uh, lot line, and then eliminate those two front yard things. I think it's, you know, I think it's an awful precedent, and it, it, they're popping up all over, and I don't know if we need a code change or something, but it's, it, it, you know, it's fine on the big houses with the 150 foot frontage or something, but when you have a 75 and under, a front yard parking, it just... Uh, it kills your design. Well, it kills the street, yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, that, so that's, that, that remains my objection. Um, okay. okay. Uh, Sarah? Yeah, I, we, we've fought the battle before as far as moving uh, cars from the front yard. And I think if, with, given the fact that there is a, I thought it was 10 and I was relieved to know that it's a five foot um, limit from the side and for parking. And uh, I, I think you could probably find that five feet and, um, and not have the two cars right smack dab in the front yard, which is unharmonious with the rest of the neighborhood, I think. Okay, Mark? First of all, thank you for making the columns slightly smaller. I think they look great. I think Peter's suggestion in your work to remove the second gable makes the house look great. I understand the comments about the parking, but I think the, um, from the house perspective, I think it's a very handsome house now. Okay, John. Um, I guess my, my biggest issue is on the rear elevation. Um, when you look at, I mean, you have to keep in mind these are not huge lots. It's a, it's a small neighborhood lot, and there is a lot of glass in the back of the house between all of the windows on the second floor, which don't bother me as much, but when you add that to all of the glass on the first floor, it becomes a problem. The big patio doors that are across the center of the house, and then those uh, windows, which you now obscure with a, a bush that doesn't really give you a clear indication of the amount of glass in the back of the house. It's just too much. And I know from my own experience, living in a neighborhood like this, and I have privet and, and uh, fences all in the back of my house, but I still see big glaring windows with lights, you know, blaring in the rear of my house almost every night. So I, I just, uh, it's too much glass. And uh, I think those transoms over those three windows need to go. All right. Uh, so I, I share the comments along with my board members. Um, I do share Peter's concern about the uh, pocket dormer. It doesn't show, um, in the renderings as much as I believe it will be visible from the, the street. Uh, I think it takes away from the improvements you've made. Um, and I recognize your client, the developer, might want that. But um, I, I think that's, I, I think it detracts from what otherwise is a good design. And I think it's a, an accommodation uh, personal accommodation that detracts from the, the street view. Uh, I also share, along with my other board members, the uh, uh, 
the concerns about the front driveway, um, you know, I, I try to separate the fact that uh, two beautiful maples were removed. Uh, but if you look on that street, that there is minimal parking in the front of the house. Uh, and I think you know, I think it was you, sir, who made a good point. You've got a nice design. You're working on a nice design. You're going to have cars sitting in the front of it. I mean, <laughs> it's ridiculous. And it uh, is a very nice design. Yeah. So, uh, and Peter has been creative uh, in making some suggestions. You do have uh, things that you can do. You're working, regrettably, with a blank slate uh, to which your landscaping plan, Brian, is woefully lacking. And, uh, you know, essentially what you've done is you put down a few crepe myrtles and eight foot uh, arborvitae or something akin to that around the lot. Uh, you stripped it, okay? Uh, I, I think your comment about the neighbors being happy, I'll take that as poetic license. Um, they're accommodating. They said, you know, they returned from a vacation and found the trees gone. They recognized things change, but they weren't happy, okay? Uh, can they do we anything? To him we did speak to him after. Okay. Just well, I'm, I'm reading from the letter, and I, I'm also reading what he submitted today. today. Ha ha that. Happy happy was not in the parlance of the letter, okay? Uh, regretfully accommodating, yes. Okay, understanding that things change, also understanding that, you know, the trees were restricted in a certain part, happy that his, uh, his foundation was compromised, his fence was compromised, that doesn't make somebody happy. You replacing it, you showing it on a detailed landscaping plan that has 14 foot hedges around the back that addresses John's concern and the neighbor's concerns because I live a lot away. Now I wasn't notified, but I can see the back of that house. So putting in eight foot arborvitaes is not gonna do it. Now, and am I selecting you? For that, no. Uh, a neighboring house. So, so all, not only are there individual third of an acre lots that are on White Street, they're also um, flag lots. So in one case, the uh, landscaping required 14 foot, maybe even 12 foot, 12 foot arbor bodies be placed there. So I would like to see a more, a richer and more comprehensive landscape plan. Uh, even one that shows a little bit more creativity. If you then incorporate the suggestions that Peter is making, and you don't have to, they're just comments, but you have the ability to take what the board has been saying is a nice design moving in the right direction with a landscaping plan that's heading you in, in the right direction with some ability to get privacy uh, and to do all those things. I think it's worth coming back with yeah, no. something that I know you're capable of doing. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, also, um, <clears throat> looking at your second floor plan, your stair hall has, has got a, 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 you know, large double hung windows lighting it up. I don't think you need those windows oh. in that pocket dormer to, I would, to, I was, to light those up. Those is on the north side. I know it's northern light. There's only two of them, so I was thinking uh, I know, it'll but be it's all right. A, but I thought morning light coming in when you walked down the hallway. Well, I don't think it is it for the, for the light. I know architecturally what you guys are saying. Yeah, I know. And also, it, it kind of, you know, it's a, your swooping roof is very attractive, and it, it emasculates it. It's like it takes a big out of it. Yeah. So anyway, and I think the landscape plan, yeah, it just can't be all lined up in a row. We've got to have a little more mm -hmm. artistry, you know, clumps, clumps of something, you know, not just this linear and we're out perimeter. We're, the, the tick of... Green giant, green giant. That won't cut it either. Right. Yeah, you know, you need, you need clumps, a little, little, art, a little bit of artistry. Yeah. <coughs> Robustness and artistry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But listen, the house looks very good. It sure does. And thank you. Okay. When it gets built, it's going to be perfect. We'll get a stream. All right. Stream so uh, apart from the letters that were submitted, which uh, we all referenced in one form or another, is there any other public <coughs> comment? Okay. Uh, and the public who might be listening is always welcome to submit comments. Um, 
and they will be entered into the file and read at the point. <coughs> so, um, unless there's any other comments from the board or the applicant, I would move that we accept the applicant's request to adjourn to our next meeting. Second. Second by Mark. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, Brian. Okay, so uh, the next application is 20 Pheasant Close North LLC at 20 Pheasant Close uh, North, uh, not surprisingly, uh, for a two-story addition and alteration. This is a new application. Do we have affidavits of mailing and posting? I've, I've seen them. They look great. You've seen them? Oh, these look even better. Okay. All right. Uh, young man, identify yourself. I'm going to let the architect who are the owners. Okay. Okay. John, when you're ready, have stuff facing us, and then Kat can scan it. Should I face it towards you? Yeah, face it towards us. Oh, towards you. Towards us, yeah. Right, Kat? All right. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Just let me know which picture you're going to talk about first. Okay. Thank you. Okay, good. Okay. Um, uh, so uh, my clients have lived in this um, sort of 1980s hip roof spec house mm -hmm. for a number of years, and they have now, if their kids are growing and they're getting larger, need more family roofs. Uh, so we decided to put addition onto the house to make it more sustainable for their family needs. Uh, so what I've essentially tried to do is use the existing architecture that's there. Wrap it up and use the this one first. Oh, okay, <laughs> great. So, so we've kept all of the, the main lines of the house in play. Um, I've gotten rid of all these um, sort of horrible round windows, and I've kept the gable ends here. I've tried to fenestrate them, and I, where there were uh, round windows, I put in uh, some transom windows. I kept the front entry pediment where, where it was, probably the only reason the last part of the house. Took out the round window. Try to unify all the new gables with um, a board and batten type of detailing on it. Here in the, uh, where the two sort of weak elements are, I created one large gable right over here. And then my new addition, I tried to make it subservient to the to the main residence. Mm -hmm. So it has a, because we're adding a, sec this, this is a one story uh, house, but we've added a second story to it over here by the new garage area. And so it's still lower than the main house and it goes all the way to the center of the garage. And so we got the front door. Now I've created a new sort of side entrance. We're not, we're not even coming as a new side porch. Directly above that is some rooms, uh, windows up above. And then new gable end for the, um, the new garage structure. And obviously there's a, there's a uh, outdoor shower beyond that. Um, Turning the turning the corner, this is the main house. This is the main road on on Pheasant Close North, and this is the sort of the the, well, it's the back elevation. Again, the same thing. We've kept the we kept the dormers, we kept the roof context the same. We've added a smaller uh, roof to the addition. Here in the the back side of the house is where we have the existing master bedroom currently sits. I'm going to go to the to the this point over here. The existing master bedroom sits over here, and we, we put a new addition onto it uh, to encompass this deck here, which they didn't use. So now we're, we've allowed their master bedroom to come into this this portion of the deck, right next to the wall there, right, right next to their uh, pergola. So that's that's right over there. Um, we've kept the we've kept the three. We're gonna, we'll, we'll be buying new doors, but we're all the doors are kind of 
I mean, from the 80s are sort of all sort of shot. Yeah, it's good right in their life. So we are, while we're keeping the, the holes the same, we're replacing them with new, new black holes. Uh, we've also, this whole, this whole house is a one-story house, except for the area where we have the new second floor. So we have, we have new, new uh, living room windows, then we have a new breakfast bay. Uh, here, we've, we've actually made a cathedral out of this to, to go along with the cathedral that's already there, which is right over here for, for breakfast bay. Then this left part of the house, the dining room, is where the old garage used to be. This garage used to be right here, and the old kitchen was here. We've, we've, we've drastically increased the, the size of the house and the roof of the kitchen, and reorientated the views out towards the back of the house. And off of here, where the old living room, where the old garage used to be, I have a, a den, and on the front of the house, we have a front um, mudroom area, a laundry closet, and access into the garage. And off the back of the house, they, are, they have a currently have a pool back there, but with no pool house, so I've given an outdoor sort of pool house in, interior wise on the house. Um, the on the street side going around, this is on same thing. We've, we've kept the lines of the existing house. We've expanded it to the master bedroom. This is probably the most, uh, I think, both the front and this side of the house are the most, most, uh, the most active size from uh, from the viewpoint of the, the public. As they turn it over here, that side, this side of the house, reflected here, and then. Um, over on the other side of the house, where the old garage used to be, is where we have the two-story addition, which is over, over here. Uh, I think that's, that's kind of a presentation so far. Okay. okay. Um, so far, that's so far so good. Good. So, far. so, so let's let's do this, uh, John. We'll turn it over first to John. We'll give John a chance on the internet to say something if he wishes. Um. Well, it, it's uh, it's obviously much different than the the existing home. Um, I uh, the the the, the, the uh, north side elevation, those double transom windows just don't seem right to me. I'd almost rather see a a, a larger single window than the double transom or what it looks like the double transom. Uh, design of those the windows you've put in place. So that is really my main comment on on the uh, the front of the the house. On the the rear does the rear of the house. Uh, I my only issue, big issue, really, is the those triangular windows uh, on both sides of the the chimney and the. Triangular window or the overcomplication of the the treatment above the the breakfast room, um, it just seems like a lot. <laughs> th th those are my main comments. I, I, I will just um, respond to the front transoms in that um, they're sort of used to a, a little more, um, you know, uh, vertical light where the where the where the round windows are. I don't mind. I, I don't mind at all making these larger windows and, and, and cleaning up the amount of light cuts there for sure. Yeah, Jeff, I think we should we should wait till all the comments from all the board members. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, John and John. Okay, Sarah. Um, I I think all of the transoms should be eliminated, and uh, okay. the hammer beams on the the main elevation I think are incongruous. Those are the brackets that come down. Mm. Okay. Um, and I, I don't think that the, the dressed up pediments, the board and batten on the pediments is something that um, makes a lot of sense. And I, I'm totally perplexed by the telescoping pediments on the, the breakfast room. I don't, that, that didn't make any sense to me at all. I'm sorry, it's, could you repeat that please? The teles what looks like telescoping pediments. This, uh, there's a, uh, there's a pergola in front of this. There's no, there's no, and if I, there's a, there's a gable, there's a gable trying the window in there. Yeah. Sure. Okay. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Maybe that gable, maybe that window mutton pattern is incorrect. Is incorrect. I, I think that's probably what it is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then I think some of your elevations have a, uh, a an overly ornate, uh, staggered effect. Uh, 
the rear elevation in particular on the east side has the, a step down of, of um, oh yeah. yeah west side west yeah. side yeah, yeah that yes I think that's probably about it okay Peter yeah, yeah listen I, I think I think the intervention is um, is welcome because it's not a particularly attractive house <laughs> Um, I agree that uh, about the transom windows. Um, I think on the front elevation, the pediment over your new second story addition is like, I know it's gratuitous. I'm not sure you need it. Um, and I think everyone has covered all my other uh, issues. Okay, Mark. I'm sorry. Can you guys walk? I'm sorry. The bed we're talking about is right. Is is this gate? Is yeah, that, that one. Here? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I'm in agreement with, with what we're hearing. It just feels a little too exterior detail heavy. Um, okay. You know, the, there's a pediment that's that's not necessary. The windows are a little big, and they have transoms, and it just feels like there's too much detail on it. If it pulls back and simplifies, which is what I'm hearing from everybody, mm -hmm. um, then I think we'll just present itself as a little more in the language of Southampton. Okay. So I will simply repeat what John said so eloquently. It's a lot. I think, and that's what you hear everybody say. It, it, it's a lot. Um, I also had a question in terms of the scaling of the garage versus the rest of the house. Mm -hmm. did, did that? It's giant. It's giant. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. You know, obviously, floor print wise, you did it with a reason, but it just somehow leans everything over to the garage to the point where it dominates and it almost looks like the rest of the house is subservient to the garage. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. I think you're right. So I, mean, I think you could reduce the size of that gable, um, the garage gable. And eliminate the hammer beam. Okay. Yeah, and, the, and the brackets that, mm -hmm. that go over that. So yeah. um, anyway, let me uh, one, give you a chance to respond and then also open it up to any public comments. Um, I hear what you say, and um, I certainly can reduce the certainly the complexity of the, of the composition and make it a lot more a little simpler. Okay. To be honest, um, I can you start from scratch? No. <laughs> no. 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 I mean the existing house. I mean blow that up. Oh. oh, oh. I yeah. don't mean. We, we didn't do. A, we didn't have really a lot of work in the existing house. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. We, All right. We have a, no, I, I understand. I, I, it was just Sarah, yes, those were all those original spec houses. Yeah, what Sarah was yeah. saying, we recognize what Peter said is that you're doing a lot to make improvements yes. in the house. Yeah. And I'm glad they enjoyed it for all these years and look forward to getting a newer and bigger house. Uh, and so, better. And better. Uh, yes. So, Cat, mm -hmm. any public comments? Nobody no? there. All right. So, John, uh, I guess you'd like us to address. Yes, please. Okay, uh, we will uh, accept your request to adjourn with a second by Mark and all in favor, aye. aye. So we look forward to seeing you in two weeks, John. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, for all those who are listening, um, that concludes our public hearings on applications for this evening. We do have on the agenda uh, a discussion, a public discussion among the board members um, regarding uh, what has recently been submitted and is on the, the village you. website, which is the draft, draft comprehensive plan, um, and including elements contained in that having to do with the expansion of the historic district and issues related to landmarking. Um, so for board members uh, and for the public, uh, it is on the website. It's 100 plus pages. Um, I have not read it in its entirety, mm -hmm. and there's no test on this. <laughs> um, there are uh, things in there that do pertain to this board. Uh, two of the conclusions uh, included expansion of the historic district uh, and landmarking um, uh, outside the historic district. Uh, obviously, when anything is Part of a landmark, a land, a historic district is, is in effect landmark from the standpoint of requiring a certificate of appropriateness. 
Um, so uh, again, if anybody has any general comments about um, the draft, we can talk about that. Uh, I would also like to zoom in on um, what we can do as a board uh, re now related to designating landmarks and historic districts. Um, so, um, and there are particular concerns about particular properties. Um, most notably, uh, it's been brought before us before the, uh, the movie theater. Um, and so, uh, you know, if anybody knows of any properties of particular concern, we can discuss it in this public forum. There is a procedure. It's uh, outlined in section 65-3. Uh, this board can, on uh, on its own volition, with full transparent transparency and public notice as required, uh, seek to designate particular structures as landmarking, and obviously they have to meet the criteria that's outlined in those codes. Uh, there is a process of notifying the public, uh, much in the same way we do, uh, requiring public notice, uh, uh, and obviously the property owner, and as well as hearing public hearings. Uh, it does also mean that during the time that process is going on, uh, no building permits could be issued related to that property. Um, so, do you want to, Mark, you had, uh, you had brought up the... Uh, uh, <coughs> the the one thing that's on my mind is the movie theater. Mm -hmm. Because it had been, there was an application to come before us a while ago. Um, I think last year. May last year? 24th, yeah. 2021. And it, it stopped because I, th there were some questions about, about is it the right applicant. But I still think that the theater itself deserves to be landmark status, given its history, and I think something that the board should consider okay. um, and come forward on, because I think it has a long and robust history as a structure in the village, and it's a very strong part of our history. And it's actually a very strong part of cinematic history, if you look at the history that, at the presentation that was made in the um, original application. So I think it behooves us as a board mm -hmm. to look at moving forward on landmarking the theater. Okay. Uh, other comments? John, Peter, Sarah? Um, I was looking at, at various things, and the, the, um, the theater actually was, was uh, inventoried in 1979 as, um, as quite a good building. And um, we can't talk about the use, but we can certainly talk about the building itself. And I, I think that um, certainly it is in the exterior of the brick elements and the fenestration on the second floor certainly appear to be uh, pretty much intact. And I, I think that it probably didn't move forward because I think it might have been like 31 and so therefore we could, we could not have designated it until we changed the date. Uh, to well, we're now 75 years right and now we can move forward we couldn't move forward at that Before. point but um, now I don't see any reason why we can't move forward okay Peter or John I agree I, I agree okay so council your your input um, the section says notice of proposed designation of a landmark or, or historic district blah, blah, involving no more than 10 properties shall be sent by registered mail to the property owners. Uh, and then it goes on to describe the process. Mm -hmm. um, is that something we would need to move now? Because we would, in essence, the board would be filing an application for landmarking. Well, it sounds like the majority of the board wants to move forward. So mm -hmm. I would suggest that the board take a vote tonight uh, to enable the building department to send those notices so that we can have a public hearing to discuss the criteria under 65-3. I like the way you said that. that. The board wants to engage their historic consultant on to prepare a report that may guide uh, that hearing. Yes, yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. indeed. And so, there, there are, um, the, the cinematic history has already been prepared, which right. is which is great. Right. So we can, we can build on that. So I'll make what I think will be a relatively simple motion that we move forward with the process to designate uh, the movie theater as a landmark, including uh, but not limited to engaging the historic consultant uh, to do an analysis. Mm -hmm. um, anything else I 
should say about that, Alice? I, I would just, just say that it's, you know, we're, we're voting to send notice of a proposed des designation. Right. Uh, and to send notice to the building department of that intent, so they will in turn uh, follow their procedure to notify the property owners. Uh, so, uh, having made that motion. A hearing date that would be included in, in that notice? Well, it requires, uh, as does any other hearing, I believe, uh, uh, to 10 days. It's a 10-day uh, notice period, I believe. Right. Um, depending on the building department schedule, we have time for the August 8th meeting, but I don't know if we would have time to <clears throat> have Sally prepare her report. Yeah. But Probably we not. might want to start the process. It's really up to the board. I don't, I don't think it would be prudent to move forward with, you know, a decision without Sally's report. Yes, exactly. So let's let's one start the process to engage Sally, and then three set the date. That's going to work um, again because August we only have one meeting in August. Yeah. So it, that'll be be tight. And if tonight is representative of uh, turnout, that will be light as well. So um, I would. You moved. Make that motion? I moved. I seconded. <laughs> Watch me move. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, seconded by Mark. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, are there other properties that we should either look at or yes. start the process? <laughs> there is one that's been on my mind for quite some time, and that's the Gideon Hall uh, that's directly behind Tate's uh, Bakery. Yes. 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 Very definitely. Yeah. On on that, uh, that's owned by somebody in Bridgehampton, right? Really. Um, that is interesting uh, because part of the comprehensive plan was the uh, development, if you will, but also the preservation of Maiden Lane all of the way down. Lane. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that is an important that's structure, an and one. I think there's no reason why we shouldn't. Uh, take the same action on that building as we are. I believe we with should. The movie theater. You know, it's not. It, it's not. A, it's not in a state of good repair. No. And it's no. going into a state of disrepair. Yes. And the so I would. I would like to move a little faster over. to make sure that it maintains yes. preserved. Yeah. And to encourage people to do some work on it. Yes. All right. Well, that that raises well, two points. I would. I would move that we um, notify the building department of our concern as to the maintenance of that structure because there is a provision. Although, wait, that's not, is that in, in the historic district? I mean, 65-11? Uh, yeah. You, you're not allowed to allow properties to within, within the historic yeah, district to fall into disrepair. Yeah. And I just, uh, Alex, do you know if, if that particular I, property? I don't believe it I is. don't think I don't it, believe it is. is. I don't believe it is. So um, I'd have to confirm. Okay. Uh, all right. So. That not but being the still, issue, but, but we would still like to move forward, forward. with. Yeah, yes. we would like, and we would like to engage Sally to also do an analysis. Very of that definitely, an, right. an existing condition. Okay, yeah. you can make that motion. What was the address again? I'm sorry. Uh, let's put it as Gideon Hall. Okay. I have it as 209 uh, Women. Yes. Sons yes. of Gideon. Yeah. Sons of Gideon. I think that that's the. the Sons of Gideon building on Windmill. Okay. Thanks. At 209. I move we, we move forward with exploring landmarking that structure and that we engage a historic consultant to give us a full report and a condition report. I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Let me bring up an, another property. Um, it's probably one of the first properties coming from west to east. Uh, I believe it's in the village, at least it's on this side, and hidden behind some bushes is what looks like a barn it could be a house do you know what i'm t almost opposite the shinnecock tribe sign oh yeah i i know exactly what you're talking about yes um and all right maybe what i'll do is i'll, I'll get the address and one confirm that it's in the village and two uh we can muck around a little yeah bit good more. question it, it actually may not be in the village uh John. I, I, we need to find out because my gut is that yeah. it's not. It's not. I don't out. I do. I don't not believe it is. No, because mm. I remember going all the way out yeah. hill and yeah. Yeah. But okay. we should double check. Okay. Alrighty. 
but we'll look that up for you. <laughs> we'll have an answer for you in August. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, there are any number of buildings that, now that it's 75 years, that, that we should be thinking about, too. 50 yeah. years, you mean. I mean, 50, 50 years. years. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, uh, the, there was a reason that was put into the code. Uh, let's be responsible in our diligence mm -hmm. and our responsibilities mm -hmm. uh, and proceed accordingly. Good. So, uh, unless there's any other further business, I'll move that we bring the meeting to a close. Council, anything you want to say? Okay. Alex? Anybody? Two things I wanted to mention uh, quickly. One is that there is been a, a public hearing schedule for the comprehensive plan um, at the second meeting of the trustees in August. I believe it's August 25th. So if any, the board um, or any members have comments that they'd like to submit to the trustees, uh, they would go to the village clerk before that date. Um, so those can be uh, submitted in writing. Um, and also I've engaged with uh, Preservation Studios and they've sent over a draft contract that's being reviewed by the village attorney. Um, and they're, if that is approved, we're looking to put that on the trustees agenda. So we're making progress with that as well. And they're looking forward to working with us on that project. Great, Great. thank Great. you so thank much, you, Alex. Alex. Thank Good you, news. Alex. Okay, Thank so you. Uh, that was going to be my question. Thank you. So it being wow, eight o'clock or just about, uh, I move that we close this evening's meeting of the Board of Architectural Review and Historic Preservation. A second on that from second. Mark. Anybody willing to uh, vote on that as well? Aye. 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 That's Aye. unanimous. All right. Thank Good night, you. everyone.